Thank you for being here. It means a lot. For those of you who don't know me, new faces, it's good to see you. I'm Sarah Hunter. I graduated from St. Vincent College with a degree in studio art in 2012. Um, I minored in art history and psychology. And I know a lot of people don't usually mention their minors, but to me they're very important because art history has greatly inspired my work. I've had the great fortune to be able to go to Rome and see lots of work. I've gone to Ireland and studied in Dublin for a little bit modern art, which was really fabulous experience. And um, psychology absolutely has been a huge influence on my work. Um, my intent was to go to graduate school for art therapy, and I've actually found that my calling seems to be providing therapy through my work for the viewers and working one on one with students. So I get a lot of private lessons, and that's been going very well. So the title, What Now, for the show was born for two reasons. One, I needed to email Matt something, um, <laughs> anything sometime soon. And I just started writing, and what I wrote was, what now? And I realized that's just been the question that has been reoccurring in my mind since everything started in March. Um, being an artist, I feel like the question is always, what now? What's next in your career? A lot of times, you are trying to pave the way, making connections, applying for shows, getting rejected, getting up, trying again. Luckily, I've had a lot of great family members to support me and a lot of friends and a lot of fellow artists that have always propelled me forward. But that question is always in the back of your mind. Um, I'm not afraid to work with different mediums and I don't like to pigeon my whole, pigeonhole myself into like one thing. Like, I just do portraits. I just do flowers. No. I do whatever I feel is right. So that what now is always a big question for me every day when I'm in the studio. Unless I have something planned out, like, you know, today I'm working on this portrait and I'm going to be doing this for the next three to four days. Otherwise, it's just sort of up in the air. And that can be really terrifying, but it can be really great. It's certainly very gratifying. Um, there's some pieces here that there's a particular piece I'm going to talk about. She's actually around the corner right here, if you guys missed her. She's called Resistance. Because something that I've been thinking about lately is I feel like there's always been a lot of resistance in me to maybe showcase your work. Are there any other art artists here? There can be this feeling inside of you, this is my friend Larry, where you're like, you know, you don't want to put yourself out there. Or maybe proposing a whole show seems like too big. Or maybe you don't actually want to own your own power. So that's actually what this piece is about. I do not generally, as I was telling Matt earlier, make anything too glittery in my artwork. But she has a very shiny crown because she's finally owning her power. She's no longer resisting herself and she's putting herself out there. I also love bees. If you didn't get the gist, I love nature and I love flowers. So she's sort of the queen bee. There's lots of bees here if you take a closer look. But the world's kind of resisting right now, right? Everything's a little bit harder since COVID started. And I was really resisting putting my artwork out there in any way in the beginning because I felt like it was almost wrong. I wasn't sure if I should be posting on Facebook or how do I post like, oh, here's a new painting I did when people's lives are falling apart. When the world shut down, how am I supposed to just be putting artwork out there? It just didn't feel right. So I waited a while and finally posted the piece and I mentioned how I felt. And the general response from people was actually please keep posting more work because it's helping us. And that's when I started really realizing that art wasn't maybe just therapy for me, but it was also therapeutic for other people. So if you do know other artists, please tell them that and promote that they keep putting themselves out there. Um, because, you know, it's a dark world, but I think art can absolutely be a light. So, does anybody have any questions? Could you explain? Yes. Oh, sorry. The painting on the right, 
The blue? Yes. The this two. one right here? Yes. This is pick a side. Um, actually, in order to explain this piece, I'll have to explain another piece as well. <laughs> pick a side and politics, which is right here with the little girl. That's actually me oh. when I was little. Um, that's pretty much what that's about. I don't talk about politics um, generally or religion, but with these two pieces, I will just say that unfortunately in our culture, there's a lot of division. And you'll be told often, you need to pick a side. Pick a side. But often that means turning our backs on each other, which is what's happening here. Um, so with the little girl over here, me and politics, um, the piece, the predominant colors I want to talk about were red, white, blue for everybody. Um, I'm the youngest of six children, that's why there's six copies. Um, and I also just wanted to say the reason that I used myself is just because politics can be something that can really divide families and unfortunately that can really hurt children. Um, like even children right now growing up, it can also hurt relationships with families or with sisters or with friends. So thick side and politics are both just about how we divide ourselves and what that causes to happen in the world. Um, I saw you guys looking earlier at the realm of certainty. So I'll talk about that piece for a minute. Uh, a lot of people don't know this. I never actually publicly talked about it. But about a year and a half ago, I was in a car accident driving home from my friend's house. Um, I'd never been in any sort of car accident before. This one was pretty serious. I actually had to plane on the interstate, and the car luckily spun the right way, and it hit the back on a very large cement median in Ohio, threw me back onto the highway, and I was able to get back off. Somehow there was no traffic. Somehow I was completely fine. The car was not, the car was totaled. Uh, so that wasn't great, but I, this is one of the first paintings I did after the accident really quite traumatized and honestly had PTSD for a while about driving. Still not great. Don't love driving in the rain. Um, but I felt very certain after the car accident that this is what I was supposed to be doing. And I'm 30 years old now and um, at the time I was 29 and I just had a lot of, you know, doubt. Is this for sure what I should be doing with my life? Maybe I should go to graduate school. Maybe I should be doing something that helps people more. For some reason, that car accident sort of solidified things for me. I'm alive, I'm here, and this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And that's what inspired the realm of certainty. Anyone have any questions on the other pieces? Uh, Sarah, the, the finish that you that put on, the gloss finish, is yeah. that spray or did you uh, paint it on? Is it acrylic, lacquer? It's Liquitex um, medium and varnish. I would really suggest it to any acrylic painters. Water soluble? It is, yeah. and it's workable, so it's not a final varnish, which is nice. Because I actually have a couple paintings here that I use Gambar on, which I do like, but it's a final varnish, so if you haven't changed your mind, <laughs> it's too late. And also, it does not quite <laughs> dry the way I want it to, but I've been very happy with the look of text yeah. because right. it's always a like, concussion. If you want, it's not sticky at all, and it gives it a nice shape. I was going to ask you if I could touch it. Yeah, you can touch it. I mean, everyone's allowed to touch the thing before. That's fine. Any other questions? Lately, I've been working on a lot of florals. For a long time, I've resisted, once again, doing that because I was told all animal paints in this area is flowers and we're sick of them. Well, okay. So, just so happens that I love to garden and I finally have a house of my own in the garden, so I always want to continue to paint flowers because I love them. And I, like I said, I paint what I love. I'm an intuitive painter. My process is if something inspires me, whether it's a picture of my niece, this is based off of my niece Emily. It was a photograph I saw of her online. I said, oh, please, you know, I have permission to paint that. Just could you send that photo to me so I can paint her? Um, my photo, a photo of my niece on the other side is what inspired Madison's painting The Hunter. Um, so it's just something, I'll see something that will inspire me, and right now that's gardening. 
Um, I'm a bit of a seasonal painter as well. I love oils, but they don't love me. <laughs> I'm finding that out the hard way. Um, so, I'm not sure how long that relationship's going to last, but at least in the summertime, I can go outside and paint with oils. So, I'll always be a person who has more oil paintings in the summertime, and then more acrylics in the fall and winter. Although I do use a lot of spray paint, and it also doesn't like me, so I don't know, guys, we'll find out what's going to happen next. What now? We'll find out. <laughs> but thank you all so much, and I actually have an official artist statement that's actually a letter to you guys that's out here by Despite It All. I saw the wall, you care to read it on your way out. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much to Matt and Melody, wherever she went for everything that they've done. Um, it's been great, and Matt, I think you did a great job making the show. So, thank you so much. Thank you.